ever experienced food poisoning, you know how awful it can be. Here to explain exactly what it is and how to avoid it is our health and wellness expert, Bryce Wild. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. And thank you for uh, walking us through this. When we Sharing were talking about this topic at our production meeting, oh my goodness, we could have gone around and around and around the table because how many everyone, times everyone's had it, right? Everyone's yeah. had an experience and yeah. it is absolutely atrocious. So yeah. we thought. It's horrible. <laughs> You're living on the throne for a few days. It's bad. Yeah. You don't know whether to sit on the throne or to be in front of the throne. Like it's a bad situation and you feel weak. Yeah. So we want to talk a little bit about causes and symptoms, but I think the first thing we need to deal with is the difference between food poisoning and the flu number because one question people I get. get confused right number one question is it the stomach flu or is it food poisoning mm -hmm. so i'm going to make it real simple right now that real urgency to get to the throne yes that immediacy that rapid onset and intensity mm -hmm. the likely giveaway that it is actually food poisoning Poison. all right yeah. and it's typically between you know one to six hours for certain bacteria we'll talk about that and then maybe even a day or two later for others but it's that urgency rapid onset violent vomiting oh. violent diarrhea so the flu bugs and and the enteroviruses and those things they typically are a little bit slower onset you're like oh Ooh, ooh, <laughs> and then that slow, insidious process, and then later on that evening, you're thinking, "What did I have to eat?" But if it was that slow, it's probably actually more of a virus. That is such a good distinction. Yeah. Yes, and that definitely uh, sums it up there. So let's talk about the culprits here. What yeah. is happening when yeah. your body has been poisoned? Yeah, and by the way, this affects about 50 million people in North America every single year. Not Kills surprised. a few thousand as well, really? and especially those that are immune compromised, the elderly and so forth. They're very young, they're very elderly. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so what's causing this is typically bacteria. Right. But before we get to the bacteria, it's the lack of sanitation. Right? Ah. Not, no, so it's number one, the lack of sanitation by food handlers. Mm -hmm. So when you're eating out fast food restaurants, or it doesn't even have to be fast food, if that employee is not washing their hand, or a grocer not washing their hand, because this stuff could be, you don't see a lot of produce here, but these things can also be found on produce, then your likelihood of contribute or con uh, contracting a bacteria is much higher. Now, it's also yeah. found in the food chain. So we've heard of you know, hamburger meat and so forth, but that's typically because it's already on the cow itself. The, the fecal matter is all over the cow. That gets literally blended into the meat. Mm -hmm. When you don't cook it at a high enough temperature, then you actually have a problem, okay? Most of us will actually experience these bacteria pass through us and not have a problem, so it's really all about the count the numbers of bacteria. That's why food handling, oh. food safety, safety, how long we leave things out of the fridge, they love warm, moist, humid environments. They're gonna multiply. When we reach a certain threshold and we consume that food, the likelihood goes up. Okay, right? so there's certain, there's definitely some checks along the way where you can do things to prevent uh, the bacteria from growing to the point where you would Cooking. get actually poisoned. That's right, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about um, the different bacteria. Staphylococcus. Staph. Staphylococcus. Yes. This is the notorious, rapidest on set bacteria. We're looking at it on screen right now. Mm -hmm. Th this bacteria multiplies so quickly and voraciously mm -hmm. and so the unsuspecting foods that we will find this in and on are these sauces. So mm -hmm. potato salad, you mm -hmm. know, chicken or tuna salad. One of the most notorious is macaroni salad. Take note of something for a second too. Surface area matters. Yes. So when there's a lot of surface area on stuff, and, and keep in mind, this is made with dairy and cheese. This is a lot of the, the time where staphylococcus is going to grow. Hollandaise sauce, you know, ranch or Caesar dressing. All these have to be notoriously kept in the fridge, not left out for long periods of time. And this is another one, cream filled Treats, even cream I'm top surprised. treats. I'm and surprised at that one because everything just seems so like preservative, processed, like it could last for the next 50 years. Okay, so here's the difference there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, now you're absolutely right about that when you buy them commercially in the box in the package. So, a lot less likely. Uh -huh. I mean, this food is not good for you in no, general, but no. at the end of the day, these no, are more contaminated, it. right? So, when you're at the, when the pastry chef and themselves are making the food once again, uh -huh. handling the food, uh -huh. chances uh, go way up for this stuff. But even commercially found, uh, uh, purchased puddings. Wow. And, and again, the the underlying theme is Staphylococcus loves uh, the, the, the cheese and creamy. the dairy and creamy stuff. Yeah, yeah. So when you're at the, the picnic, yeah. you know, and you there's a big thing twice, of potato you know, salad. Yeah, if it's, it's been left food. out and then you ask your, you know, if it's a potluck and that person hasn't put it on ice, yes. you know, yeah, you might want to avoid that. We're actually going to talk about some of those tips as well yeah. to keep them uh, in mind, but let's talk about E. coli. E. coli is one of the most notorious, most common, in mm -hmm. fact, of all of those susceptibilities. So E. coli is also a notorious, you know, you know single-celled, 
uh, you know, uh, organism that mm -hmm. ultimately exists on virtually all surfaces, but certainly in our gut. And okay. it's supposed to be there in small amounts. It's not supposed to be here, yes. okay? When we put it from there to here, it's a problem, right? right? So, and it's also, so we know about hamburger meat, and it's a, the most common, you know, commonly found in hamburger meat. Yes. But also in, uh, in, in beef, in regular, and steak. You got a, a okay. lot of people that like blue stuff, not a good idea. Oh, like the not cooked. Not cooked. Like, yeah, yeah, don't go for the rare or raw. Bloody. Yeah, not a good idea. Don't ever buy stuff that says, you know, 50% off clearance. But it's so You can cheap. buy clothes that way, but don't buy <laughs> meat that way. Also, when you go to a restaurant, if they have a special, yes. you probably actually want to avoid that. That's the restaurant trying to push that thing out. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also E. coli often found, again, on, on leafy green vegetables, you know, whether it's romaine lettuce or spinach, because of in the field, the manure that they use to fertilize has not been properly pasture. It's not been actually controlled or decontaminated. You've so here's a quick wash tip. And wash and wash. wash the heck out of your produce. Mm -hmm. Here's a quick tip though. You can see all the soil on this actually. Yep. You know there's a lot of soil yep. on this stuff. So once you can wash this stuff until the soil is entirely off. That's when you kind of know it's pretty clean. But take the external shell of your lettuce off. Ditch these guys. Most contaminated part of the lettuce. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a tip. Okay what about when you get these and it says oh it's already been washed. <laughs> Thank you. So pre-washed, four times washed, ultra washed, you know, pre-microwave, whatever. It's it's doesn't abso matter. Doesn't matter. You absolutely have to wash that stuff. Oh wow! Again, again. <laughs> one of my favorite little tools in the kitchen is one of those spinners. So if you hate yes. the water that's left over, put in a spinner and spin the water off. Okay. Right? Get a little workout there as well. All right. Yeah, so salmonella. Uh, salmonella, and we know about this as it relates to chicken. So here's another mm -hmm. quick tip. Try, if you're gonna get chicken in this small strip, mm -hmm. make sure you wash it first and cook it really, really well like all chicken. Yes. If you get this type of chicken, get one of those temperature gauges and yes. stick it in the chicken, whether you're grilling it or it's going in the oven. You have to get that chicken fully cooked all the way through. Be That's why there's safe. no such thing as chicken sushi. You right. can't eat chicken raw, right? <laughs> so sushi is another, you know, it's another potential contaminant. Again, uh, the, the, the handling is number one. Number two, it's ultimately what's found in raw fish, parasites yes. and other things. Eggs is another one, but when we crack the egg, you see salmonella happens all the time from feces and chicken and so forth on the outside of the egg shell. It's just there in high count. Mm -hmm. When you crack that egg, you can ultimately contaminate the salmonella into your egg. Oh, and so once again, okay. fully cook your food, all right? right? Very important thing. Sometimes salmonella can actually bore itself right into the egg. I mean, you know, the good so thing is that pe most people are cooking their eggs, but you need yeah, to absolutely. really cook it Well, through. some people, I mean, this is maybe in the 70s, a fad. It's like raw. into the raw shake yeah. and down. That's a Rocky mm. Balboa thing. I don't know mm -hmm. if that, that's dating us probably, but so, and then, <laughs> and then I just want to touch on this real quickly. The, I mean, it can go on and on about how an unhealthy processed meat is, yes. but processed meat can have all of these bacteria in it, as well as something called listeriosis. It's another yes. horribly and often deadly, especially in the elderly, bacteria. Yeah. And here's another one, rice. Rice always contains a bacteria within it that's heat resistant. Now, it uh -huh. won't affect you, but if you leave it out for longer than two hours, this bacteria can fester and, and, and quickly turn over, mm -hmm. and those counts get high enough to cause uh, food poisoning. If it goes in the fridge within that two hours, fine, but eat it within two days. It's my rice 2-2 rule, okay? Oh. So no longer than two hours out after cooking and no more than two days in the, in fridge. the fridge. Absolutely. Interesting. I thought rice was one of those things that just like stood the, like, well, the you, distance. Di uh, me too, and you can eat it five, I know y'all are eating rice like a week or two later and you find it in the back of the fridge and Maybe re, re stir fry. Maybe a little bit, yeah. Don't, don't do that. Okay. Two quick home remedies, probiotics, get the highest strain, highest counts you can find when yeah. and if you're experiencing food poisoning, mm -hmm. and activated charcoal. This literally yes. sucks up. Now, these bacteria, they release toxins. Those toxins are what basically cause the food poisoning. Mm -hmm. So activated charcoal and probiotics, but folks, present to the ER. Go to your doctor. You're most likely, if you're experiencing food poisoning, going to resolve naturally, but you may require a very potent antibiotic. Interesting. Wash your hands and wash your wash food. Your